Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM here from a lovely sunny San Diego and I'm joined by Rory Peters who's in I'm sure an equally sunny Los Angeles today. Definitely. <laughs> and Rory's um his mission is like the late Steve Jobs to make a dent in the universe and it starts by helping as many people as he can reach their biggest and most important personal and business goals. But today we want to talk leadership and we particularly want to talk about three words to lead by. Okay, so this sounds intriguing, Rory. So let's get straight into it. What are the three words? The three words are character, relationships, and influence. Okay. All right. Well, let's start with the, the first one. Um, character. What do you mean by character? Because uh, I think that's a I think that's a word that everybody knows. Everybody knows the dictionary meaning of, but very few people know the real meaning of. Character. It's basically who a character is is to the grain of who you are. You know, are you an honest person? Are you somebody who can be trusted? Are you somebody who is a person of your word? If you say you're going to do something, you do it. You don't tell people you can do things you can't do. You don't tell people you're going to do things you don't intend on doing. You look for the ability to help others. So when you're in a position of leadership, it's not about what can I do for myself. It's you know, how can I help my team? How can I help my organization? Whatever it is that you are, wherever you're leading. Mm -hmm. And and let's face it. Okay, so so character comes about through all of your words, actions, and deeds, right? Because I mean, character can only be measured by whether you do as you say, whether you follow through, whether you really mean what you say, and and so it's obviously from a leadership point of view, it's very very important that you're careful, right, about what you say and the promises you make and the actions you take. And, and it, you know, it's it's if you're a person of character, right? Mm -hmm. You don't really have to be careful because it's who you are. So, you know, when I'm leading a team, I just don't tell them things that aren't true. I don't tell them things. I don't blow things out of proportion. I don't make uh, huge um, uh, pie in the sky kind of visions of things that could never be. I basically am always trying to be as straightforward and honest with them as I can. And I don't have to think about being careful necessarily you know what i mean because if it's who you are if it's it's ingrained in, in you you just be yourself and your your desire to help people your desire to do the best you can help others become the best they can will just be a will be as you said reflected in your actions and your deeds i don't think you have to spend too much time you know overly thinking about it Right. Well, I mean, I guess I mean, if you're in a situation where, let's face it, people believe that they're extremely busy today, busier than ever. I say we're more distracted than ever. I don't think we're actually busier than ever. I think that's a myth. I just think okay. we have more things distracting us. And uh, so in a, in a world like that, it is easy to lose track or to, you know, to lose track of maybe the things that you say you're going to do or the promises you make or whatever. I'm just, that's what I'm saying is like you have to be maybe you have to be conscious about organizing yourself better. Oh, most definitely. I mean, you've got to be aware of the things you've promised or the statements you've made, you know, and get so that you can you know, follow up and do the things you said you're going to do. Yeah, you can't just randomly say things and then just let them go. <laughs> so how do you, I mean, if, this, if that's something, so how do you do, if you like, a kind of self-assessment on your own character, right? I mean, how do people know whether they, what their character is or how they're perceived? I think if you had to do a self-assessment, uh, would you say that, you know, the vast majority, if not, you know, I mean, nobody's perfect, but say sure. that the absolute vast majority of things you say are true, right? That you do not, that you don't say things that you think will get the job done, even though you don't know that what you're saying is actually, you know, correct. Mm -hmm. Are you interested in helping others? Is it when you're interacting with somebody, if, whether it's your family, whether it's your customers, whether it's your peers, are you interested in you know, their welfare, possibly above and beyond your own. Mm -hmm. So even when I was in sales, right, I very seldom, and I learned this, you know, back, you know, as I was building my career, I very seldom focused on making money. 
I focused on taking care of the customer. But I'm no idiot. I knew that if I took care of the customer, did my job to the best of my ability, but they were my focus, I'd make money. I knew it. You know, so it wasn't altruistic necessarily. It was it was basically being a good person, which you enjoy being, mm -hmm. and also was smart. Right. So to me, in many ways, it's enlightened self-interest. I mean, if you're helping other people and, you know, to achieve what they want to achieve, etc., then it's helping you achieve what you want to achieve, which is a which is a very uh, fine and equal kind of social contract in many ways, isn't it? Exactly. It is. I mean, it, it, everybody wins. Mm -hmm. And when your focus is somebody else, you will end up winning as well. It just, you know, if believe in karma or whatever it is that you'd like to believe in, you know, you will come out in good shape. So your second one is relationships, right? So, so talk to me a little bit about that, because that's a real, that's obviously very challenging with leadership, because you have relationships on different levels with different people across your organization or your sphere of influence. It's true. And it, to me, and this is, you know, everybody has their own take on this, but for myself, of the three words, this is the, the character is the building block, right? It's the mm -hmm. foundation of everything you do. I think your ability to to lead is really, really a function of the relationships you build. In other words, if you don't have the ability to build relationship with people to uh, to not get them to as in uh, manipulate them, but build a relationship such a way that they care about you as much as they care about themselves that they are interested in your success as well as themselves, as you should be as well. But if you can build those kind of relationships where people get to know you, you get to know the people that you're working with, right? I've heard it said that, there, that you can offer three things to build relationships. You offer yourself, which as I mentioned a second ago, you allow people to get to know who you are, right? You're not standoffish. You're not trying to be somebody you're not you let them know who you are so that they can they can trust you they know who the person is you offer your time one of the most valuable commodities a leader has is their time it's something you can't get back right once you spend mm -hmm. it it's gone so offering somebody your time is helps build that relationship that demonstration of your interest in their well-being as well as your own and then last is offer your appreciation so to help build relationships, appreciate and show appreciation for the things that people accomplish, right? The things they do. Look for things to show appreciation for. Now, it doesn't mean every minute of every second, but, you know, be aware of the things that the people around you are doing. And if you see something that, you know, makes you smile or you're, you think that's pretty cool, say it, right? Say something. Let them know that what they do is not going unnoticed and that you appreciate their efforts. Yeah, it's almost like that concept of catching people doing something right. Isn't it? Exactly. Uh, and it's and it's true. I mean, and let's face it, this is a this is a challenge because number one, it's when things go wrong we tend to, everybody gets in a panic and we tend to identify very quickly. And we're like, ha ha, and we're gonna make sure this never happens again. And like, who's who was responsible for this? When things go well, you tend to go, oh, things are going well and move on without a second thought, right? Because that's what you expect to happen. So it's almost like you have to, as you say, you have to consciously take a time out to go, um, you know, to appreciate people, to, th to thank people, to give people a word of encouragement. So to make sure, because otherwise we could go a long time and suddenly realize, you know, I've never actually said anything encouraging to people in the last while. Exactly. And you get, it's funny when I, I have these conversations with people at various times and when I've given leadership talks or taught leadership classes, one of the things that will invariably come up from somebody in the group is that they get paid to do their job. Why do I have to go out of my way to show appreciation? And the simple fact is you don't. Mm -hmm. But the level of leadership that you're going to obtain, the level of cooperation and the level of care that you're going to obtain from the people you work with is going to be a factor of not only all the other things that you do well, but your ability to build those relationships and show that appreciation so that, again, they're as interested in your success as they are your own. And I've experienced that on the other end where I was the person who was being showed appreciation. And I know that I had managers in the past that 
knew exactly what my buttons were. And I knew they knew what my buttons were. But, you know, they showed me the appreciation. They they respected what I did. They gave me little, you know, allowed me to do things I love to do and avoid things I didn't like to do. And it was it was a win-win because I was like, I'm going to make sure these guys succeed. I like this guy and I want to make sure he doesn't go anywhere. So I'm going to make sure he succeeds. So I've been on both sides of that coin and it really does work. Yeah, and and the third one you say is is influence. So talk a little bit about influence. Well, according to John C. Maxwell, right in his book, The Twenty One Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, he basically says that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And I understand what he's saying. I still think relationships is the strong arm of of building a strong, becoming a strong leader. But influence is kind of the the benchmark or the measurement. Uh, there's a there's a saying that says uh, if you think you're a leader and you turn around and nobody's following, you're just out for a walk, mm-hmm. right? Meaning you've got nobody following you. You're all by yourself. You know, have a nice walk. Leadership is about people following you. And for you to be a strong leader, you have to be able to influence people. And again, that a lot of times gets this negative connotation, but that isn't what I mean. It's you have as a leader, one of your jobs is to have a, a vision of where you want to take your followers, right? So if you're running an organization or your family, mm-hmm. you know, where do you want them to go? What's the goal? What's the vision of wh- what you want to accomplish? In order to get to that vision, you have to be able to influence those people to see your vision, to understand it and to buy into it. And that requires influence. And people won't buy into your vision unless they buy into you. So right. if you don't have a vision, there's no place you want to go. You're really not a leader. Yeah. Right? Well, but you know, as they always say, if you don't know where you're going, like any road will take you there, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and obviously all of this ties together because in order to, in order to influence people, um, you know, they have to have trust in you and they, so your, your character, your integrity, the relationships that you have with them are going to, are going to um, you know feed into this, but uh, you know some people confuse influence in a leadership or a work um, context sometimes with sort of sort of manipulation, right? Correct, and that's again it goes back to the character, right? Mm-hmm. That's not what leadership is. Now it's not saying that there aren't people in roles of management or you know authority who don't abuse that situation and manipulate people. You know, it, it, it happens, but that's not leadership, mm-hmm. right? That's definitely not leadership. Leadership, my formula of leadership is credibility plus trust. So credibility is that I believe you can do what you say you're going to do. Trust is that I believe you're actually going to do it. So it's one thing to believe you can do it. So if you say that this is our goal, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, there is no way in a million years you're going to be able to accomplish that. Right. Now, there goes the credibility, right? There goes the influence. Or I believe, and I've met people like this, where I knew that they could do what they say they're going to do. I had my doubts that they really were going to do what they said they're going to do. Right? The trust is gone. Again, there goes influence. Right? So So it's it's that combination of of all the above. But again, it all builds on character. If you're somebody of good character, you're not going to be manipulative. I mean, taking care of somebody again. It's uh, I can't remember exactly how you call it, but it was a uh, the one we were talking about uh, earlier, best uh, self-interest. But, yeah, uh, en- enlightened self-interest. Enlightened self-interest. I like that. It's kind of the same thing, right? I know that if I take care of my people, you know, if I do the things that a good leader does, and, and my my interests are not only my own, but theirs as well. Again, you're going to do the right things. You're going to be somebody of credibility. You're going to be somebody of trustworthiness. You're not going to manipulate your people. You're going to teach them. You're going to motivate them, but you're not manipulating them. Mm-hmm. And you can always, I mean, the thing is, um, to Rory, right, is you can always change, right? I mean, there's, there's, I mean, you don't, you know, we evolve as people so dramatically through our lives, right? And, you know, even if you're in a leadership position, and maybe you haven't had all of these things, maybe you haven't acted in the best ways in the past or whatever that you can, you can change and and establish a new level of trust if you start to be consistent in what you're doing. Because sometimes I have this thing that, uh, that kind of really, it's, um, it's irritating me a lot lately. It's when people say, um, uh, well, th- that's just who I am, right? And and yeah. my and my answer to that is, well, it's not very good, is it? 
you know, so maybe you should try being someone else, you know, I mean, you know, evolve as a person, we all have to evolve. So you can make changes and establish some of these things. So, you know, the past doesn't always have to be prologue, does it? No, definitely not. And it's funny because it made me think of a, a quote. Uh, I always have trouble pronouncing this. I have to look it up every time and see how it's pronounced. But uh, uh, Lao Tzu, I believe yeah, is how Lao it's pronounced, Tzu, yeah. but a 600 century mm -hmm. philosopher, right? One of his sayings is that the greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change simply by changing their attitude, mm -hmm. right? So if you decide, you know what, I haven't always been as truthful. I, I tend to stretch the truth and not really, you know, give them all the facts, et cetera. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to yeah. do my best to just say what I know to be true and not try to manipulate people by giving them false information. You make that decision. And if you actually want to become a person of character, you will follow through. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying for anybody listening, it's like it's not like you are necessarily born with these traits. It's not necessary that you're born and you've grown up with like, you know, with doing everything perfect. And you've got this stellar character. These are things that we learn over time. And sometimes, you know, we we learn from adverse situations or whatever, but you can make changes and you can decide to be to be something different. But it takes effort and it takes consistency and it'll take a while for people to trust the change. Right. Oh, for sure. And I mean, I, I went through it myself. I mean, as a child, I wasn't, I was lacked a lot of self-confidence. And so I tended to exaggerate things or, you know, say things that weren't completely true, you know, just because I, I was trying to bolster myself mm -hmm. in the, in the eyes of my peers. Right. And, you know, as I got older, I realized, okay, that's not such a good thing. And, you know, people need to be able to trust me. So that's not working. So I learned that that was not the way I really wanted to be. And I, and I changed and anybody can make that decision, but it does take, it does take effort to, to actually put that in play. You've got to make the decision and then follow through. So uh, as we, as we come to the end of the session, so let's just recap again, your, your three words to, um, to lead by a character relationship and influence and just sum them up again for everyone. So character is the building block. It's who you are. So if you are a person of good character, you're going to you're going to be as honest as, as we as human beings are capable of being <laughs> honest. Uh, you know, you're, and you're going to be interested in not only your own well-being, but you're going to be interested in the people you lead as well. With relationships, it is, I believe, the key to becoming a strong leader. The stronger your relationships are, the more people get to know you, they get to understand you, you get to know them. You build those relationships that begin to care about your success as much as their own, especially if you do offer your time, your yourself, your appreciation. And last is influence. And again, influence is credibility and trust. Are you capable of doing the things you say you're going to do? And do people believe that you can do the, say, the things you say you're going to do? And again, if you're a person of good character, that's all going to be yes. Excellent. All right. Well, listen, Rory, it's been a, a pleasure speaking with you again. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Before we go, it's RoryPeters.com, the correct if people want to find out more about you. Very true. Yeah, you can go online there and uh, a lot of information there to take a look at. Yeah. And some of the services you offer? I speak on leadership as well as uh, peak performance. Uh, and I'm also uh, an author and I, I open uh, workshops as well. Excellent. All right. Well, listen, hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot.